Hi, I'm Gayatri Goganini. I'll be sharing a few topics based on the experience that I have gained over the years. Today, I'm here to discuss asset management with you guys. So let's see what asset management is. So the agenda for today is to cover all these topics. So let's see uh, what the topics are. So basically, asset management itself says that it is related to assets. So we need to know what assets are and what is asset management. So we'll be covering the benefits once the asset management has been implemented and the strategic plan that uh, an organization needs to plan uh, to implement asset management into the organization and the benefits of the strategic plan uh, to implement asset management. And uh, we'll be looking at asset management ecosystem work management tools, CMMS, computerized maintenance management system, GIST geographical information system, APM, asset performance management, and what can be achieved by implementing asset management. So we are going to look at all these today. So what are assets? So asset is nothing but a thing or an entity um, which has a value to it and which adds value to the organization. So let's see, yeah. As it is nothing but an item, thing or an entity that has a potential value which adds to the organization. Asset management is nothing but a system which helps the organization to uh, have an overview of all the assets which are there in the organization. Okay, uh, now we are looking at the types of the assets which has been classified into tangible and intangible. Tangible is nothing but um, assets which have uh, a physical value to it, whereas intangible has value as well, but it, it is going to be an indirect one. Uh, as you could see in the figure, uh, tangible says that it, it, it is some, I, I did give uh, some examples, like tangible could be equipment, machinery, and computer IT, et cetera, which has a physical or a monetary value to it, but intangible, uh, suppose if the organization is ready to sell a particular part of the uh, sector, like uh, any any industry, like oil and gas or transportation or anything, and it has some products which has patents to it or any kind of trademarks, and if they are quoting a certain value uh, to that particular wing to sell off, then it includes patents and trademarks as well. So uh, it has an indirect value to the organization, but it is, it is not a physical value. Uh, it is not a monetary or a physical value involved in it. This is the difference between tangible and intangible. So as you could see, tangible has the equipment, machinery, and computer and IT, and intangible is more of patents, government grants, and trademarks. So now we are going with the global asset management or for the overall organization. Uh, if, if the organization is global infrastructure, how the uh, asset management can be implemented uh, in the overall infrastructure? Um, it could be divided into different parts. Computer IT and IT would be, I'll, I'll give the details further, but uh, it could be sectored into IT, uh, business, sales, and then if, the, if at all, if the organization has uh, retail to it, even that could be in included. Computer and IT would be the, <clears throat> would be common for all the divisions the enterprise will be having globally. Uh, business, when, while coming to the business, asset management helps uh, to track the profits of uh, all the branches and the subsidiaries in each country uh, Then the organization has been placed in, or the subsidiaries or anything. It, it helps to derive the profits involved in it. Uh, while coming to the sales, if at all asset management has been implemented, it would track the sales as well. Uh, suppose if a product is doing well in this particular country and in that particular location, then uh, then the organization can take more uh, uh, steps to increase the um, sales in other sections based on uh, the areas. And if at all, if the sales are not good, they could take addition, but the, the product can be uh, stopped, means like the products can be considered uh, not doing well in that particular uh, uh, country, so they could go ahead with go ahead with the decision. So uh, set management helps in that. While coming to retail again, it is the same. Uh, if the product is doing good in <coughs> particular 
um, sector, then uh, the decision making would be more easy. So it helps in retail sector as well. Uh, asset industries, suppose if we uh, classify the industries into different uh, uh, sectors, construction, transportation, manufacturing, agricultural, oil and gas, healthcare, these are all the divisions that I took. All these would have the common uh, things which are uh, which which has the equipment, machinery, and then uh, the equipment which is related to construction, or it could be any other thing, trailers, containers, and chases, everything is involved. And IT would all, I if all the sectors would need computer and IT, and the financial tracking uh, that needs to be done via tools. So all these uh, sectors, construction sector, agriculture, any kind of industry, industry needs all these. So the asset industry can be classified into uh, different sectors and it depends on what client requires. He might require uh, the asset management to be in one industry and rest all can be normal. So it, it depends on how the client uh, needs. And even the classification uh, depends on that. They might ask for only one or they might ask for uh, multiple. So, so basically what is asset management? We'll look into that. It is nothing but managing all the assets across a uh, business which are tangible or intangible. It, it gives us a overall picture of all assets at a single point and it helps to manage business uh, uh, with its applications and uh, uh, different aspects of uh, asset management. It helps the business of the assets possible and at the same time it uh, has a centralized uh, dashboard which helps the um, uh, data collection of all the um, assets involved in the organization and uh, it helps to uh, analyze data and create the uh, asset life cycle and monitor all assets it helps the businesses to analyze data uh, and uh, build the asset, li asset life cycle every asset has a life cycle suppose if the uh, asset has a maintenance and an expiry period it gives us the uh, data of that particular asset clearly you know, through this asset management system and uh, efficiently we can monitor the asset as well via GIS. Uh, so asset management helps the organization in keeping track of all the assets and monitoring them, which gives the organization great benefit out of it. So global asset months, if you implement global ma asset management, it helps the organization to keep the financial management in place. And it can, uh, it can give an idea of the, uh, all the sectors that uh, the organization has. Suppose it has branches and subsidiaries in different countries and how the businesses are in different uh, areas. Asset management can be a single centralized uh, system which helps the business to uh, take effective uh, uh, decision making and uh, uh, helps for helps the uh, organization uh, uh, to uh, to keep the business in uh, compliance according to the rules and regulations and maintenance management can also be achieved. Let's see what the benefits of asset management are. Uh, it gives the organization uh, to account all the assets as we discussed before. It helps to manage and uh, identify the risks involved and uh, it helps to remove the ghost assets involved in the uh, company's inventory. Suppose like if there is any asset which has, uh, which is obsoleted, means it has been installed, but the maintenance has been done, but the condition of that particular asset is not good, uh, then it, it should be obsoleted or the expiry period of a, uh, uh, of, a pro of an asset has been uh, uh, delayed or uh, so it, it will be considered as a ghost asset and it has to be replaced so it it, it will be, uh, this asset management gives you a track of all the ghost assets uh, in the company and uh, it, it, it gives us uh, uh, com compliance as well whether we are uh, following the rules and regulations and if, the, if, uh, if all the processes are in compliance or not uh, at the same time it gives us uh, an idea of uh, acqui acquisition as well and the usage of the assets as well, where they are being placed and where they are being installed and whether we should acquire a, an asset, uh, whether we should acquire an asset and all the details could be uh, 
<clears throat> derived when we apply asset management to our uh, enterprise. Let's see what are the more benefits involved when we implement asset management. Uh, it gives us an in-depth analysis of, uh, of assets, which gives more efficiency uh, to the whole process and uh, real-time data collection can be done. Asset tracking can be done using GIS and it could be cloud-based. Cloud so these are the benefits. And other than that, uh, we could see the performance as well of the assets that we are going to use. Uh, asset performance uh, management helps in that. Uh, other than that, we could uh, uh, derive the total costs of all the assets that are being used in the whole organization and then how they are operating and what is the maintenance period of each asset that could also be derived. So by implementing asset management, the benefits of asset management uh, involves global asset management as well, where the centralized global asset management can be achieved. Even uh, achieving global asset management is a benefit. What, so what is the strategic plan to implement AM in the organization? Uh, so basically, we, we need to plan and then execute and then check whether the assets are performing properly and then action. So uh this this is the whole process and uh, the baseline of the strategic uh, plan is nothing but creating an asset inventory what are all the assets involved in the whole process and then the asset life cycle which uh, which derives the whole cost involved in it each each asset has a life cycle to it so even that should be derived and other than that the roles involved in uh, in this whole process process Suppose if the assets are, are being classified into different sections like uh, electrical, um, electronics, and then safety and everything. So the roles need to be divided and the responsibility for each asset should be uh, allotted to that particular individual. That gives us the whole picture of which person is, in, uh, is responsible for this particular uh, asset. The roles need to be derived and... Uh, designated according to uh, the whole plan and the tools involved to uh, to implement this asset management all needs to be planned ahead so uh, the baseline of strategic plan uh, involves the catalog of all the assets what are the uh, total assets involved count of it and the where the uh, um, assets are going to be installed the location and what is the value of that particular asset and what is the date of asset acquired. So the asset life cycle is nothing but acquiring means like purchasing a particular uh, particular asset and then commissioning and being installing, meaning installing and then operate, how checking uh, how, how is it working. And then once uh, if, if it is, the maintenance period or the particular life cycle of that asset has been uh, done, then uh, obviously it needs to be uh, disposed. So uh, asset life cycle involves acquiring, commissioning and uh, operate and dispose. So acquiring, <clears throat> while coming to acquiring, it involves uh, all the procurement and vendor management, it comes into the picture while coming to acquiring. Commissioning involves, uh, uh, as you know, uh, all the uh, assets need to be tagged and uh, that is how the database would uh, be able to track that particular asset. All needs a barcode or a tag. So the classification would be more easy and the documentation all needs to be uh, placed in the uh, document re documentation registry or uh, to the database where the clear uh, tracking could be provided. Uh, commissioning involves all this because once the commissioning is done, um, you need to uh, give a uh, document where it could be digital or uh, or or a uh, Excel or anything which could be loaded directly into the database. So that is how we did it. Um, yeah, operation is nothing but uh, maintenance and uh, how the Whole, uh, um, whole asset is performing. So th that could be involved in uh, planning and uh, 
and the life cycle all comes into the picture uh, while coming to the operation and disposal disposal is nothing but condition as a asset <clears throat> modification or planning and upgradation if if it needs to be upgraded then obviously the, the existing asset would be disposed and uh, replacement uh, cost analysis need to come into picture so disposal documentation has also uh, it it also needs to be uh, properly documented so once we uh, purchase something then it would be it would be a part and once it moves from us to the location where it needs to be installed then it it is considered as an asset suppose if you are taking a card and then that needs to be installed in a rack so this card the cables and all the uh, parts would be considered as chail and the parent would be the rack so these all uh, chail parts need to be assembled to the card and then need to be placed in the rack so that would be once it is installed it is considered as an asset so next we'll be looking at the strategic plan roles and tools so we need to uh, before uh, uh, implementing asset management itself we need to derive all the uh, roles and responsibilities and the tools involved in it so determine who is responsible for that particular asset and uh, we need to uh, discuss and uh, finalize on what software you are going to use to enable the asset management system and then finalizing on the data architecture all the data that is related to asset management which data needs to be placed where uh, that that helps the whole thing and finalizing asset management system architecture so once the data architecture is finalized it totally helps the asset management system architecture as well system architecture can be uh, an over overall picture where each uh, uh, data can be classified the data architecture helps uh, the system architecture to uh, place the particular data in that uh, uh, divided sections of each system architecture so system architecture de uh, decides which data need to be placed where and data architecture uh, uh, helps for the data flow and into that particular uh, system architecture so da data flow into asset management system would be the final um, implementation part so how the hardware uh, can be implemented in the asset management is through uh, as i said before it is going to be using barcodes and id tags uh, you need to track them as they come into the company and the customized reports to the client needs to be finalized even the reports needs to be discussed with the client how they require them if at all if you are looking if you are working for uh, another client and you have the asset management tool with you then you need to talk to the client how the uh, reports uh, needs to be presented to them so that uh, that uh, report itself needs to be matched with the data architecture and system architecture so once you derive that particular report that should be feasible enough for the client to view the whole data of the assets right away so uh, they need to give us all the information how the data to be transferred into the database basically so that helps the uh, customized reports as well so once you click uh the reports suppose if you need to look at a particular uh, look at all the assets that are located in that particular location then if you give the location name itself all the uh, id ka, id tags that are related to that particular area uh, we need to create a we will be able to generate that report if they are not giving that location to us or if they if we are not entering that location obviously the data would be missed so uh, what are the benefits just now I, as i discussed uh, planning is the key so what are the benefits if we have a strategic plan so it gives us uh, uh, an uh, improved efficiency and uh, rules and regulations will be followed and ensures compliance and maintenance will be um, in place and reduces all the losses involved and customer satisfaction would be derived because they are the people who will be giving us all the inputs so what is the uh, asset management ecosystem and how does uh, it look let's see 
So typical asset management eco ecosystem components involve financial systems, geographical information system, work management, and uh, asset, asset performance management and project management tools. So financial systems are basically, most of them use SAP uh, or Oracle uh, work management system and uh, EAM, as you see, an enterprise asset management system, it is not, uh, we'll go in detail about CMMS and uh, SAP, IBM Maxi Maximo and ABB Ellipse. It, these are the ones most people are using and GIS is more of Argus and GTEC. Project management is more of SAP and Oracle Primavera. And ABM uh, is asset performance management is more of Meridium, DMM and Infonet. So these are all the example applications which I am giving. So uh, there might be more tools, but this is uh, what I have in. So we'll go in detail about uh, computerized ma maintenance management system. It is more of maintenance management system, uh, kind of meaning work order, work order management system. Um, CMMS, it is nothing but a centralized maintenance uh, information system. Uh, CMMS is more uh, used in the manufacturing, oil, gas, and uh, power generation, transportation, and other industries. I did mention all these industries before. So most of these industries use CMMS system. And it is uh, uh, more, uh, it's, it's more, uh, a core is a database and the data model helps the organization and the equipment and the resources, uh, everything to be maintained. And it helps the data model helps the uh, whole main maintenance management system to be in line with the organization. So uh, what is the functionality? Uh, labor resource and labor management asset registry or order management can be uh, done via CMMS. Mm, maintenance can be achieved and inventory management and materials can be done. Other than that, reporting analysis and auditing, it helps for auditing as well. So this is the structure. Uh, the, this, it has its own work structure, work management uh, alignment, if you see. So everything is interlinked. I'm not going in detail with, uh, with the whole thing, but real-time system, project management, asset management, back office supply chain, work management. I'm not able to view properly here, but I hope you could see that. Uh, means like it is visible to you. So work scheduling, everything is uh, interlinked. I'm not going in detail. As you could see, uh, maintenance management system, it is... Uh, more of work order system and it is uh, linked with project management, real time uh, asset management, supply chain, uh, everything, back office, everything is interlinked in it. So once you implement computerized maintenance management system, what are the benefits we achieve? Uh, as asset visibility where the particular asset has been installed can be uh, identified. Workflow visibility, automation, uh, the whole process can be automated and streamlined process can be uh, a benefit. And then workforce in the field can be managed properly and then the maintenance uh, can be achieved. Maintenance. Knowledge transfer can be achieved and then the compliance management because everything is in a place like rules and regulations can be followed and it is uh, according to the complaints health, safety, and environment also. So what are the work management tools? It is Maximo and then the clear request. Uh, Maximo, the key features of Maximo would be leveraging market leading EAM and then the enhancement of the reliability by providing AI powered monitoring, inspection, and predictive maintenance can be achieved. Uh, that would be a key feature. And then the multi-cloud deployment is, uh, creates and gives us a great flexibility. So ClearQuest is the one which I worked on. It uh, helps us to processes and then full lifecycle traceability, automation, and uh, most up-to-date information can be achieved of the assets. And uh, to clear, it gives us a clear in, insight of the whole process. Suppose if you require uh, uh, an information of uh, what are all the assets that has been obsoleted we could achieve, what are all the 
uh, uh, SS that are uh, in, the, in a particular location that could be achieved? What are all the uh, uh, SS that has been installed on a particular date that can also be achieved? Everything can be traceable. Everything is traceable and the uh, location of the asset can also be achieved. And it is more of a, a change configuration and workflow management. So we we'll look at uh, just now, geographical information system. Uh, it gives us uh, uh, data visualization. Um, uh, you could see what are all assets uh, located at particular location and uh, that could be 2D, 3D and 4D. All the data maintenance can be achieved in 2D, 3D or 4D. It, it gives us uh, access to the workers through uh, different systems. Like if at all, if the, um, the guy is in the maintenance uh, location, like in the field, if at all, if he wants to uh, update an information that the particular asset has been maintained or installed or anything, it could he could just uh, um, uh, give us an information uh, online or uh, uh, the document can be signed and uh, uploaded into the database directly. So, um, Argus gives us uh, the, that possibility of for the user from the field also. So that uh, so you could see the real time data. That's what integrate data from multiple sources. That's what it helps, and transform data into maps and actionable information. So this data can be transformed into maps. So what are the benefits of asset tracking? It gives us the asset location and then the monitoring can be achieved and it totally helps with the audit trails. Like suppose if uh, there is an audit and they want to see whether the uh, assets are installed in that particular location or not and in real time, they could uh, right away look into the database or whatever tool they are using, they can just get the audit, audit trails. Obviously, they'll uh, it would be a great asset to the organization to get the audit done in time and uh, more with more ease, like real-time data. It, it totally helps us with that, helps the organization with that. Uh, tracking work in progress also. So suppose if there is a, a work that is in process in the field, you could just uh, get the information right away because everything is real-time. They could uh, give the information as, uh, as and when the asset is installed, they can load the data right away. So now we are going to look at asset performance management. So I just took an example of uh, Meridium, which is a GE product, I think. So it helps to monitor and then optimize the productivity and then risk uh, management of the risk and then the predictive maintenance of the assets. And then <clears throat> overall costs can be uh, tracked and uh, management of the cost can be done, which helps to lower the costs as well. And then the faster time to value can be achieved using asset man performance management. What can we achieve by implementing AM? What can we achieve by uh, asset management uh, implementation? Let's see. Uh, obviously, this, uh, uh, the customer complaints would be reduced because of uh, uh, the more streamlined processes and then uh, audits would be in place and real-time data can be achieved using this and uh, asset performance can be improved. Uh, so the customer complaints would reduce automatically and then uh, customer value would increase. Uh, with, uh, with in turn, increases the customer value and then the... Uh, Equipment utilization also. Suppose if uh, a particular um, asset can be used somewhere else, we can just replace them. So the acquisition of that particular asset can also be reduced and then improves the efficiency. Uh, budgeting and decision, decision making can also be achieved uh, with the asset management. Uh, rules and regulations are obviously followed. So, um, uh, which in turn gives us uh, complaints to the organization, ensures compliance to the organization. Uh, equipment maintenance can be achieved using CEMMS and then reduce loss to the organization. Uh, so these are all the items that we could achieve by implementing asset management to the overall uh, enterprise. So 
thank you uh, i had a great time um, sharing my knowledge with you and i'll be back soon with a couple of uh, presentations which are related to uh, ptc which is posture trend control and some uh, few other systems other than that i'll be talking about interlocking and then uh, client relationship management so uh, these are the topics which you will be seeing soon other than that i am looking at different other uh, topics that are related to my interests i'll be sharing that with you as well thank you so much hope you had a great time thank you bye